Last week, Battletech, we looked at the idea, we asked the question, the worst mechs in the game. I think we got to balance that out. And um, look at some of the god machines. I define a god machine, and there's god machines in every weight class. It gets a little bit um, harder at the extremes where you have uh, heavy, heavy assault and light, light, ultra light, light mechs. But there are certain machines that if we look at a formula, they excel. They take advantage of all of the options in Battletech and independent of scenario, independent of what you're facing, they just work. And we all have our favorite machines. Some of them might not be that great. Um, I, I love the Warhammer. It's iconic. I love the Blackjack. I love the Marauder. I love the Stalker. I am obsessed with archers and longbows. But there are machines. Uh, well, you know, look, I like the Orion. I like the Catapult. I could just name, I like all mechs. Let's just make it easy. This way also I can justify buying more and more mechs, um, especially as we get plastics. Pushing that out and pushing that aside, uh, it is worth in your collection, outside of your favorite machines, having these god mechs. Because independent of mission, independent of play style, independent of hex map that you pick, maybe you just randomly pick the hex map, they're just good. So let's build that checklist, let's build that criteria, and then I'm going to open up the comments with you guys being my secret weapon. Do you agree with my assessment, my, my formula here? And if so, or if not, machines that you would classify as this, this kind of godhood status. It's not always battle value. Like, yeah, battle value that's spent on stuff that is the most efficient is going to be lower than certain mechs that have a little bit of everything but we can't always go by battle value because you could have a high battle value machine and it is brutally efficient the first thing i look at is redundancy redundancy is this idea in battletech we've explored it it's 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 important like the first thing to understand in battletech is the power of redundancy you got to hit your opponent first to hit them it's a constant back and forth um what's your shooting skill your gunnery how far away is it? Did you walk? Did you run? Did you jump? Did your opponent jump? How many hexes has your opponent moved? Are they obscured? Are they in plus one woods, plus two woods? Um, different factors to bring in, right? All those factors, the number's getting higher while you're trying to bring it lower. So just by shooting one gun versus two guns versus three guns or, or lasers or missiles or whatever it's going to be, you increase the odds of hitting and hitting is good. But hitting isn't over. Um, you want to try and hit in the same spot. What you see ultimately in the beginning in Battletech is a mech takes a couple of hits and one point on that mech begins to get weaker. You know, take uh, three PPC hits, two of them to the same part. That part is now significantly weakened. And that's what you want to hone in on. So now my facing, I'm going to try and isolate that area. You know, left facing versus center versus forward. Um, you might try to turn your mech so this way you protect that i mean there's this back and forth but having multiple weapons redundancy that you can fire means that once a part of your opponent's mech starts to weaken or goes to internal you increase your chances of hitting so running around with just one medium laser is not going to do much if you're a light mech you're a light mech but if i have a warhammer with the redundancy of the ppcs and redundancy of other weapons that's the start so first we look at redundancy uh, we also look at range brackets, and you can't always get all of these things. Range brackets mean um, two things. I have an optimal bracket that the mech works, so maybe that's long range. Um, look at the archer. The archer wants to look work at long range. Is the archer a god machine? Maybe. Maybe not. It has the LRM-20s, or for the lulls, I do play the variant from time to time um, with all the the unguided rockets and just just mash those buttons as much as i can but looking at the stock version you've got the 20s that's the first range bracket you've got 20 packs dealing the most damage getting the most spread they're in tandem they're working they have the redundancy that's that's solid a secondary range bracket is when we activate into the medium lasers so it, it's not only having the, the redundancy and the tandem of the weapons, the range brackets the mech operates at, do you have that redundancy? Do you have multiple weapons in that range bracket? There are going to be mechs like the Battlemaster. One would say the Battlemaster is primarily a close-up machine. 
It's got the PPC stock for long range. It doesn't have redundancy at long range, but it's not a long range machine. Another example would be the Grasshopper. Grasshopper, in my mind, is a god machine because it has it oper- well, can heat management. It operates at close range. It has a full brace of lasers to utilize. It has the LRM-5. That gives it something to do at long range. So you can have one weapon that does something at a range bracket, but where it operates at that sweet spot, it needs to have at least one optimal range bracket, maybe two. And then the final checklist is, and it's not always possible, can it take advantage of each phase of the game, right? Does it have an action that is above average or a- a- excelable? I'm trying to think of a good description in that range bracket. Every, I start range bracket, excuse me, action bracket. So let's look at the phases and, and let's look at the grasshopper, right? Because I, I do believe the grasshopper is a god machine. Catapult would be a god machine. Then your vote for those god machines, grasshopper. Movement phase. So we get past the initiative phase. Movement phase. Well, Grasshopper's got some good movement. You know, if it's another mech or the Grasshopper 2, jump jets, right? Not every mech has jump jets. So if you find yourself with a mech in the movement phase and based on its classification, its weight classification, if it has average or above average movement plus just jump capability, that's positive. You know, light mechs are supposed to be fast. Irby's not fast. So he's already got a strike against him. Second would be, obviously, the shooting phase. Does it have multiple range brackets? Does it have redundancy? Um, Does it have unique things that it can take advantage of? Like the archer could indirect fire. Might not be effective. You got to have a spotter. You got to have other things. It could work in that way. If you're playing with um, tech periods and different rules, auto cannons, different ammo, missiles, different ammo, Those are all pluses. You're taking advantage of the most options to leverage the alpha in the shooting phase. Um, And then we get into the physical phase, right? A machine that has the tonnage punching or kicking or the possibility for death from above, that's that's very positive in that area. So we want to look across the entire spectrum. And of course, things like armor, uh, that's important and the distribution of various systems. Um, Obviously, if I'm a mech, the the arms are the weakest point. If the majority of my weapons and profile is loaded up in those arms, then, you know, that might be a problem. Um, Something like the awesome, the locations, the awesome is an awesome mech, those locations, yes, you've got the PPC in the arm, and that could get blasted off, and it always often does. But then you've got left torso, right torso, PPCs, no ammo, and... That's you've got a slab of armor in front there. That's potent. That's a lot to break through. So that, based on the physical structure, if it takes advantage of the physical structures, you get a plus in that category too. I feel a little bit better because I know in in looking at um, worthless machines, and I have a lot of worthless mechs. They're they're quirky. I love them. They're not the best. We play the narrative. I mean, Irby just and I play the Irby with the AC twenty. I play that variant. That, that's like taking things down a little bit. But pushing that aside, if we're looking just pure meta, just crunching the numbers, kick that narrative out the door, right? Battletech, the role-playing aspect, kick it out. Not in there. We're just looking at it. What is your checklist for god machines and what mechs are on your list? Or in the comments section, I should say, because maybe I've got to justify a new mech purchase um, exploring this idea of god machines.